All right, hey guys. Part three. Um. Anyways, I think I told you guys. Oh, that day that I had to leave my apartment two days before that, I told you a total stranger showed up at my door with six hundred twenty dollars. I've also told you before that money has showed up in my purse that wasn't there before. Um, there was a time I was at the homeless ministry, and I think I shared this in a video several videos ago. When I was leaving my apartment that day, I was really poor, really broke. I knew that I was getting ready to be evicted. I didn't know what I was going to do. I was scared. And I was like, Lord, if I needed tampons right now, I wouldn't even have the money to get tampons. Like, that's really scary. And then when I got to the homeless ministry that night, I had a lady begging me for... Um, and I say begging, not because I made her beg, because I wouldn't make somebody beg. I wouldn't put somebody under my heel like that and humiliate them. If she says she needs tampons and I have them, I'm just going to give them to her. I'm not going to make her, like, grovel like some people want to do. They want you to grovel. And then they want to remind you for the rest of your life that they did something to help you. That's not the way we're supposed to help people for what it's worth. When you help somebody, you help them and you move on. There's people that sometimes, and even if you've continued to help somebody, there's people that I've helped, a lot of people in this life that I've helped, but I don't go chasing them down afterwards and tearing them down and throwing stones at them. If your heart is in it to help somebody because you're trying to, the Bible says if you do it unto them, you do it unto Jesus. So if I help you, I help Jesus. Period. You know, there's no sense in like, then I just, I guess what I'm saying is, I'm just making that point of, and you guys can probably tell I'm feeling frustrated right now. It's that, it's that mentality of, I've helped you, so now you owe me something. You know, now I feel like I have some kind of a right over you. Um, I saw a girl's videos that she, now she is not a believer in Christ. She apparently grew up believing in Christ, but doesn't believe in Christ now. But the thing is, is she's always spending a lot of time trying to discredit Christ. And usually you'll find, now she does believe in Yahweh, or Yahuwah. She does believe in the Father and the Old Testament, but she doesn't practice, or doesn't believe in the New Testament or the New Covenant. What you'll find is people that spend a lot of time trying to discredit Christ are usually the ones that are seeking him the heaviest. Usually the ones that, and she did grow up in a church where they did believe in the New Testament, they did believe in the New Covenant. Um... But because of being hurt or abused or targeted or, or having to face a lot of, you know, crappy situations in this life, she's gotten away from believing in that. And so now it's almost like she's going out of her way to try to discredit Christians or Christ followers or whatever. But like I said, be leery of that um, because she does make a lot of good points about a lot of things. I'm not talking about with Christ, but about Christians in general. One of her big beefs is talking about how Christians, like, they're usually the selfish, most selfish people that there are. They don't want to help anybody. They don't want to help a homeless person. They don't want to help anybody with their money. They don't want to get their hands dirty. They don't want to go into a homeless ministry or a homeless shelter. They don't want to go into a prison. They don't want to go into the nursing home. They don't want to help orphans. They don't want to do the things that we're supposed to be doing as a people that are called by God to walk out the Great Commission. They don't want to do it. They don't, they don't want to deal with it. They would rather, you know, worry about what color their next coach bag is going to be or um, how many Prada shoes they have or whatever. And she makes a lot of valid points. But my point is, is I am seeing brothers and sisters, um, I guess more sisters, I'm seeing people that I know on YouTube that I love and care about as my siblings in Christ that are, I can tell, feeling confusion, and I'm not going to get into that in this segment. I'm going to make that maybe the next video or the video after that. Um, I'm not trying to upload 15,000 videos today. I'm honestly just trying to get this done because, like I said, I'm really tired of trying to get all these videos done and trying to upload them, and the, YouTube never lets me upload them. So I'm hoping that this whole, like, part one, part two, part three type thing with the 15-minute segments will be better and hoping it will let me upload um, so I will kind of segue into that conversation in a different 15 minute video. But anyways, um, something with the cats, you know, when you have cats or dogs, you know that you love them, you know that they're your pets, they're your animals and they become part of your family. 
Well, we had adopted two cats about five years ago from the Humane Society, and then we rescued another kitten from my son's grandparents' church on September 27th last year, 927. Um, and oddly enough, God always does everything very in sync, prophetically in sync in my life. And so on 927, the Hebrew date was Tishri 23rd. So that would be one, two, and three. 1230 is the day that I was evicted from my apartment. September 27, like Daniel 927, referring to the abomination of desolation, but 927, I'm not saying that's what it refers to in this scenario. I'm just saying, you know, that the Lord, one of the ways he talks to us is in numbers. Um, but 927, September 27th is coming up here, you know, in what, two months, I guess? I'm checking the time. Because the friend that I'm staying with isn't here right now, and, um, when she gets back, I don't really want to be out here. I'd rather just go into my room and record videos. I try to kind of stay scarce. I'm very thankful for a roof over my head. Don't get me wrong, for sure. But like I said, when somebody else has you in their home, friends or not, I mean, you know, it's not easy. It's not easy on the person whose home you're in, and it's not easy on the it's not, it's not easy on the person who's in your home because it's just I try to make myself scarce a lot. And again, I love this person. She's a friend, but it's, it's really not even the point. The point is, is I'm sick and tired of living out of suitcases, feeling like I'm kind of hiding out in a spare bedroom, trying to stay out of everybody's hair. It's just, it's been a nightmare. Um, back to my cats. The day that I left the hotel, the lady's house where my friend had taken me, she had a dog and could not take my cats. And on top of that, she's allergic to cats. So he ended up having to take my cats for a few months. Well, what happened was, because he lived with so many other roommates, they needed him to get rid of my cat, and or they needed him to get rid of my cats and get them back to me. But the friend that I'm staying with had already told me she's got a male cat and he's territorial, and I was not allowed to have the cats here. Well, I had already known that, and I understood that. So just one more devastation that I've had to deal with as far as being parted from are being separated from my cats because your animals bring you comfort. Just like when I lost my car. Really? Just like when I lost my car, I had my car taken on March 13th. Here, I finally, after going through all of that trial for my faith and everything I had to go through with the custody battle, finally having my son back, at least on somewhat of a normal routine. Um, it wasn't nearly as what it used to be, like it before I got drugged through courts for posting about the end times and all my Facebook statuses, posts, all my YouTube videos. I had to go and freaking hand deal with all that in a court in a pagan courtroom, pagan court system. I'm not saying that we all don't have um, flaws and imperfections. I mean, none of us are like holy and righteous and perfect all the time. That's not the case. But what I am saying is when you've been spending five years of your life sticking your neck out trying to warn about the end times, and then that's the very thing that gets drugged through the court system, you know, they're not exactly on your side, okay? And then when I finally do get my child back on somewhat of a normal routine, then I get my car taken, and so because of transportation, now I hardly get to see him because of that, let alone the fact that just, oh my gosh, I'm not even going to say anything else about that right now. Um, the friend of mine that had my cats, he knew I wasn't able to have cats here, and he ended up having to give one of my cats to a neighbor, and apparently the little girl of these people, you know, really fell in love with her or whatever, and you guys have seen her before, and um, her name's Hammy, and they're all my babies, but she was definitely my baby, and she was always just so sweet, she really wasn't sure if she was a, kit, a cat or a dog, she... Like, she loves to snuggle and cuddle, and that's kind of how my cats are anyways. Very loving. And so that devastated me, and heart just completely broke my heart. Um, but there was, I mean, it wasn't his fault. There was really nothing he could do about it, because he was needing to get the cats out of there, because he's got a bunch of other roommates, and he knew that I was in a situation at this friend's house where I couldn't have them. So I didn't know what to do, so I had been calling and calling and calling and trying to find different people and trying to find rescue places and... Uh, humane society. I mean, the last thing I wanted to do was to take my cats, my babies, 
to a humane society when I was the one to rescue them to begin with. So one of them he ended up giving away, which broke my heart. I think about her every day. I always worry that she'll feel abandoned. And I'm sure that some of you are sitting out there and you're going to watch this and think that's just stupid. It's just a cat. Well, you know what? I mean, if you have an animal, if you have a dog, if you have a cat, if you have, uh, you know, four-footed furry, you know, love in your home, then you know that they bring comfort. You know that they bring joy and they bring a sense of peace. And when you're hurting, they sense it. You know what I mean? And they come up and they love on you. And when you're going through a lot of hard times, even in the nursing home, I had patients that would have uh, fake, like pretend stuffed dogs or a stuffed cat or a baby doll or something that they could hold just to bring comfort to them. Um, so this is not an abnormal thing. Most people should already understand that. Well, it came down to the wire where I had nowhere for them to go. He'd already given one of them away, which totally devastated me. But again, I can't fault him for that. It's not his fault. He just, he was trying to help me out because he knew or he didn't think at the time he could bring him here. Ended up having to bring my cats to me anyway. So two out of the three I have back here with me. And for the first few weeks, it was a very, very, very big strain between the friend that I'm staying with and myself because she obviously didn't want the cats here. She, her cats territorial she, you know she's gone through this kind of thing before where she had to get rid of a cat because her cat wasn't getting along with it and I had been worried sick for weeks that it's like every day I feel threatened that something is gonna get taken from me something else is gonna happen it's like I feel like I'm always in a battle zone I'm always in a freaking war zone and it seems like it's never ending Um, so anyways, I've been keeping the two cats in the spare bedroom where I stay. So the spare bedroom has her furniture, her bed, her desk, all of her pictures, you know, all of her belongings, tons of stuff everywhere, plus all of my luggage and suitcases sitting around, boxes, bags, you know, basically, it's like I have no, I have nowhere to call my own. As, as grateful and thankful as I am because what I'm telling you right now has nothing to do with my friend it has nothing to do with being grateful of being and having a roof over my head it has nothing to do with that the Lord already knows my heart but I'm trying to tell you until you've been in a situation like this where you are always living under it's like under somebody else's mercy under somebody else's roof under somebody else's whatever you would want to call it and you're living, you know, you, you've got a bed to sleep on, but like everything around you, 90% of it's not yours, and the rest of it is suitcases and, you know, clothes that you've got piled in a stack because you don't have your dressers, you don't have your bookshelves, you don't have any of your books, you don't have anything. All of your things are in storage, constantly being threatened to be sold. And I finally have two of my two cats with me. Um, the one cat that my son and I rescued from his grandparents' church in September 27th of last year that I told you about, um, she is not even a year old, and so there was a veterinarian that I met that I know through one of the homeless ministries, and he is no longer practicing uh, because of, he's got sick, but um, he's no longer at his practice, but he was a veterinarian, had uh, was at a practice, a clinic, and he ended up having to spay her, like fix her for me or whatever. He didn't have to, but he did it um, out of the goodness of his heart and did it at no charge. But her little stitches have been in there for months. I haven't been able to take her back up there to get those little stitches out because I don't have a car. It's things, it's not that I'm trying to give you guys every de detail. Here's what I want to explain, okay? Here's another reason why I have a hard time with this update. There's sometimes where I want to make videos for you guys that are just kind of short, quick videos about things that are going on ministry-wise. Like, this is what happened today, or this is what happened in the town I'm in. By the way, the town I'm in is full of Jews, non-Messianic Jews. That's a whole nother story. So, I say that to say God has still been faithful to open up doors to minister. But, getting back to what I was saying a second ago, a big part of the reason why I feel so frustrated about making, about every time I try to make this update video is because I already knew I was going to be so overwhelmed. It's very hard for me to try to concisely verbalize or express what is really happening, what is really going on, how bad I really feel, how crappy I feel like this train wreck of a mess really is. Um, 
I can't pretend. I can't put a smile on. I don't hardly smile anymore. If I do smile, it's usually because I'm just hiding the pain. I'm hiding the pain. Literally. I'm, you know, if I smile when I'm with my friend, um, if we're talking about something or um, I'm talking about things that happen to me when I go out, you know, when I'm on the bike and I go through the bike trail, I'm out there in the woods, in the wilderness, like a woman in the wilderness saying, repent, prepare the way of the Lord. I'm literally a woman in the wilderness out on a bike. I've been caught in town up there in a, in a rainstorm, getting rained on, freezing cold blowing against me, no helmet, the bike is a little bit too tall, the brakes aren't that good, I mean just putting in applications for minimum wage jobs like restaurants and things like that. But again, like I said probably 10 minutes ago, I got it in my spirit one day where it was almost like that thought from the Lord of like, there's no guarantees that I'm going to let you go back into anything like that when, you know, you got a call in your life for ministry. But the thing is, is I'm still, I'm stressed out of my mind because I'm like, I'm not in my own home. I'm in a situation where I'm in somebody else's home. You know, it's not my food. It's somebody else's food. So I'm eating. Like, I need personal things. I need personal items. Personal, you know what I'm trying to say? I shouldn't have to really spell it out. I need um, food. I need, you know, I need to be able to see my son sometimes and take him to get something to eat. I need to be able to put some money on my storage garages. I can't, like I said, I can't, I can't even, now that they've closed my bank account because of lack of activity, I can't, I can't even open up a bank account again until I get money to put in the bank account. If, like, if I have a PayPal account associated with my YouTube, and people a lot of times will want to donate if they're led to give or if they're led to donate, well, I was going to say this about that. If somebody is led to give, please email me first. Email me on my YouTube or my email. Get a hold of me. Because if somebody, if you're led to give and you really, I'm not asking you for anything. I'm not asking anybody for anything. I'm saying if anyone is led to give and they want to give, they want to help, um, I guess get a hold of me first. Because if you're somebody that I know well enough, if you're someone that I've bonded with and I've connected with and that I trust, I'm willing to give out my address to where I'm staying. Because it's not my home, it's my friend's home. And I've already talked to her about that, you know, that... I'm willing to give out my address to people that know me well enough or that I know well enough that I would trust them with my last name and where I'm staying. But if it's somebody, if you're somebody out there in the world that we've never really had a conversation, we don't really know each other, but you're led to give or you're led to donate, um, feel free to go to my PayPal link and do it that way. Um, but the only thing is, is my bank account was linked to my PayPal account. <laughs> so basically now... I still have my PayPal account, but I no longer have my bank account. And PayPal, if you know anything about PayPal, they are a complete nightmare to deal with. Because you could be on the phone with them for like three, four hours. It's horrible. And um, it's not just something as simple as opening up a bank account and then going into PayPal and editing it. It, it doesn't work that way. Now, first of all, you've got to have money to put in the bank account to open up a bank account. Second of all, when you link up that, you're probably going to have to spend three, four hours with PayPal on the phone. Third of all, PayPal, apparently, according to their new, the way they do it now, if you link up your bank account with PayPal, they want to put two different transactions in and out of your bank to verify that it's your bank. Fourth of all, I'm, the goal for me is to try to get the same exact account number, like whatever account number and routing number was on my checkbooks, I'm going to try to get the exact same account number with my bank, hoping that I don't have to go in there and edit all that information in my PayPal, but the, the, the chances of that happening are slim to none. More than likely, that account number has already been given to somebody else, and I'm going to have to get a new account information in, in, issued to me. So, and, and again, these things might sound so trivial. If you had a car, if you had a husband that had been helping you, if you had somebody that had been, you know, putting that roof over your head, if you um, have never lost your spouse, if you've never lost your children or your child over your faith, if you've never had your car repossessed, if you've never had your belongings thrown out on the lawn and been completely evicted and thrown out of your home, um, having nowhere to live, living out of suitcases, in other words, these things might sound so trivial to somebody, 
well, my videos aren't for you. If, if you're the one that wants to throw stones at me emotionally and try to tear me down and mock me and scoff me and say, well, you know, then I don't understand why you left your career. I left my career for the 10 billionth time because when the Lord approached me and let me know that there was a calling on my life and continued to give me apocalyptic dreams and this, that, and the other and continues to be very slow to open he doesn't really seem to want to be too excited about opening up doors for me to go back into even if it's a minimum wage job that's why I said whenever I kind of heard that in my spirit where it was like the Lord was saying like don't just assume I'm going to open up one of these doors for you when there's all these Jews in this town that are not messianic that I've also been trying to witness to and minister to it's it's like but at the same time I'm like Lord I need money I cannot do this I need help I need help I'm feeling completely overwhelmed stressed out even my friend and I need to end this video even my friend you know before before my two cats got back here I told you my friend the guy that they were with had to give one of them to the neighbor because he didn't think that he thought he was gonna have to give all three of my cats away trying to find a home for them because I didn't think I was allowed to have them here and like I said for the first few weeks that I had him here it caused t tension for sure um, but she continued to pray about it, and I continued to pray and ask God for mercy in the situation, and they are still here with me, but again, I keep them in my room. I put a hand towel in between my, like, under the door, between the door and the carpet, I put a hand towel so that my cats and her cat don't, like, try to mess under underneath the door. Like, I literally feel emotionally imprisoned, and it has nothing to do with my friend. It has nothing to do with, it has nothing to do with anything. It has to do with what I'm going through. It has to do with, I'm sick and tired of this battle. I'm sick of, and I'm, I'm, as I'm even making this video, I'm thinking, is this going to be just another waste of my time where I make these videos and then they don't upload or they upload 80% and I spend hours and hours trying to get them uploaded and then they just get, you know, it, it aborts and stops the upload because YouTube wants to censor me or Satan doesn't want me to, I, I don't know what the deal is. I just know I'm sick and tired of the battle. So, this is kind of why I really was almost nervous about even making updates because I already knew I was going to be, I already knew I'm upset. I already knew that I'm stressed beyond capacity. I'll see you in the next video. i got to end this. I'll go on to part four.